Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Let's make some noise for Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's make some noise for God. Lift up the name of our God, amen. We are here this morning. We have some of our leaders here. We have our praise team here. We have the musicians here. So we're going to enjoy the presence of the Lord, amen, in this place. And before we do anything, we always start every service off with prayer, amen. We always believe in giving God the glory because the Bible says, In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your path, amen. So prayer is acknowledging God. So we're going to go into prayer, but as we do that, I want you to do me, do me a favor, do me three things. I want you to like, I want you to share, and then I want you to sow a seed if the message and the praise and worship has blessed you, amen. You have all of that information on the screen, so we're going to ask this morning if you would just bow your heads with us. We want to remember our leader, amen, Bishop Williams, saying in our prayers that the Spirit of the Lord will just rest upon him and lay his saying, amen. So we're going to ask that you would bow your heads. Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, for your loving kindness and your tender mercy, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you've made a way for us to reach your people through social media, God. We thank you for this opportunity to come into their home, Lord, to speak a word of life in the name of Jesus. When death is going on all around us, we speak life. The Bible declares, I shall live and not die, that I may declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. No matter what's going on, Father, we thank you right now. We lift up our leader, Bishop William Spain, God, in the name of Jesus. We pray it before your altar, God, asking that you would touch his body, that you give him strength in the name of Jesus, that you would bless his rib, his help me, Lord, that you would give Lady Regina Spain, Lord, healing and help, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you right now, Lord, for everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord. We pray even for Overseer Davis and Lady Loretta Davis. We pray your healing virtue and power upon them, God. We just thank you, Lord, that your healing power is present in the land. Hallelujah. We know there's a virus in the land, but there's also the Spirit of God that's in the land. Hallelujah. Oh, God, show yourself strong this morning, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, be pleased with our manner of worship, Lord. Let every song that's sung bring you glory. Let every chord that's played bring you glory. Let every word that's spoken bring you glory. Lord, we want the glory of God to come into the house, Lord.
go into the word of God real quick. Amen. I invite somebody to tune in and watch. Amen. Don't not be before you long, but 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15 through 18. Amen. You can remain seated in the sanctuary. It's fine. But 2 Corinthians 4, 15 through 18, and then we're going to give you a, a brief word and we're going to the house. Amen. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, 15 through 18, for all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many yeah. redound to the glory of God. Hallelujah. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Verse 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Yeah. Were before us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. I preached on this text before, but I want to use the same topic again. There will be glory after this. Amen. I don't know whatever your this is, but there will be glory after this. Everybody in here got a this. Everybody on Facebook Live got a this. But whatever your this is, there will be glory after this. Hallelujah. Amen. Love of our heads. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. We're so humble, Lord, for the opportunity to see the word of life to your people, God. We thank you right now for this short space of time that we can come in to their homes and to their living rooms, Lord, and just encourage them, Lord, with what you have given us. God, we pray right now that you will continue to strengthen Archbishop Spain and Lady Spain and that you would bless them and be with them, God. We thank you right now that you would cover all of your saints under the blood, Lord, that this virus would not come to our dwelling, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your healing virtue and your keeping power. Now, Father, anoint your man servant that I may speak a word of life and bring encouragement and inspiration to your people, Lord. By the Spirit of Almighty God, the Bible declares that the grass withers, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. And all of God's people say, Amen. 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 Glory to God. There will be glory after this. Now, I want to tell a little story. Once upon a time, there was this married couple, and they had two children. Now. Uh, one of the child, one of the child was a pessimist, and the other was an optimist. To try and understand why the children were so different, they consulted a psychiatrist. The psychiatrist decided to do an experiment. So, with the first child, they led them led the child into a room that was full of brand new toys, and the child broke out crying, burst out in tears. And so, the psychiatrist couldn't understand why. So, he, he asked the child. Why are you crying? The child says that these are brand new toys and I'm afraid if I play with them, I'll break them. So the psychiatrist knew that this was the pessimist, amen? So the psychiatrist led the other child into a room that was full of horse manure. All of a sudden, the child just dies in and grabs hands full of horse manure and just moving it all out of the way. And the psychiatrist couldn't understand why was the child moving all this disgusting horse manure around. And so he asked the child, why are you doing that? The child responded, glory to God, with all this horse manure in here, there has to be a pony somewhere, glory to God. <laughs> and he was determined to find it. Now, when we look at it, the psychiatrist knew that this was the optimist. Now, many of us are dealing with a myriad of trials and tribulations that seem to be somewhat overwhelming. But even though you're dealing with a lot of manure, glory to God, you can look past it all and see that glory is coming. Amen. Knowing who God is gives us the ability to stay positive even when everything around us wants us to be negative. Come on now. The devil has a vested interest in you remaining negative. Because when you are negative, catch me now, all that comes out of your mouth are negative things. And the Bible declares that death and life are in the power of the tongue, glory to God. So when we look at it, many of us are dealing with the trial of not being able to pay our rent 
or our mortgage, but there's someone that is homeless that would love to be dealing with that trial. It's the truth. Some of us are dealing with the inability to put gas in our car, but there's someone that's at the bus stop that would love to be dealing with that particular trial. Some of you are dealing with mean supervisors and mean managers on your job, but due to COVID-19, there are some people that are unemployed that would love to be dealing with that trial, glory to God. So to simply surmise it all, we are all dealing with something, or we all have a this, glory to God. But the Apostle Paul reminds us that these things are but light afflictions, and that even though we are in the midst of the affliction, he wants you to know that glory is coming. Amen? Yeah, amen. Now, having the knowledge that glory is coming gives us the impetus or the drive to press on in the midst of our affliction. Yes, sir. Some of you listening to me understand exactly what I'm saying. You get straight to go to work in, on Monday knowing you're going to get paid on Friday. <laughs> that is the impetus for you to get up on Monday morning, glory to God, knowing that Friday is coming. But the believer must understand and grab hold to the old song that said, if you put your time in, payday is coming after a while, all right? Now, the Apostle Paul gives us preview into the mind of God concerning what is to come for the believer. He says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 and 10. He says, but as it is written, I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Amen? How do y'all love him? Well, if you love him, God has prepared some stuff for you. But verse 10 says, this, But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Now, when we think of verse 9, that's enough to cause us to shout. Right. But it really doesn't outline what will be given to us. But in verse 10, we find out that God has revealed them to us by his spirit. So if I want to know exactly what God has prepared for me, I've got to get in the spirit because that's the place where God has revealed it. Come on now. So look, watch this is how it works. When I'm fasting, when I'm fasting, can I get an amen? When I'm fasting and I'm praying, and I'm in my prayer closet, communing with God, God begins to talk to me. And God begins to tell me, he says, look, he says, I know you came into this church and four months later, it, there was a coronavirus. But God said, I had to get you alone with myself to show you that you going, I'm going to fill this place up to capacity, watch this, and then I'm going to bless you to find a 50,000 square foot facility. Oh, I know y'all have. And then guess what? In this facility, it's going to have multi-classrooms, glory to God. It's going to have a huge fellowship hall, glory to God. Come on, somebody. We're going to have a bookstore. We're going to have an elder care facility. Watch this now. Stay with me. Because when you get in the spirit, God will show you exactly what he's going to do for you. That's why the enemy keeps us operating in the flesh. Because as long as we in the flesh, we always think about what the devil is doing to us. But when we get in the spirit, we realize what God is going to do for us. Watch this. Whenever you're dealing with an issue, the enemy wants to keep you in the flesh. Because as long as you see to stay in the flesh, then you'll fight. I'm going to tell them all. I'm going to let them have a piece of my mind. You ain't got no pieces to spare. But when you stay in the spirit, guess what? The person that did you wrong, you find yourself praying for. Yes, sir. Yeah. Good God Almighty. Oh, the person that treated you bad, you find yourself, Lord, bless him. Yeah. Bless him, bless him, bless him. Yeah. Even though the flesh don't want to do it, the spirit yeah. will tell you to give God glory. Now, now, when I use the phrase, there will be glory after this, the word this is referring to the affliction. Now, the affliction does not merely precede the glory. The affliction helps to produce the glory. You understand what I'm saying? The affliction helps to produce the glory. God takes and employs our affliction to work for us. That's why the Apostle Paul says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, it don't last that long. But have you ever noticed why you it? it seems like it's going on forever? Yeah. 
Hallelujah. But it don't last long. But he said, Paul said, it worked for us a far more exceeding and eternal way of glory. That's why Paul can say in Romans 8 and 28, he says this, For we not told that all things work together for good to them who love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Amen. Therefore, my afflictions help produce the glory. But it's all in how you count it. James said, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing that the trying of uh, the trying or the testing of your faith. Guess what? If you're not going through anything, your faith is not being tested. And faith that hasn't been tested is faith that can't be trusted. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm gonna say it again. Faith that hasn't been tested is faith that can't be trusted. Uh, you, I, I hear you saying, but when you go through it, can you still get God? Come on. Can you still get God praise? You give God a high praise from a low place. That begins, that's the test of faith. Look, I can, I can praise God all day long, glory to God, as long as I got money in my pocket. As long as my wife has the right children doing what they're supposed to. But can you praise God when none of them is happening? David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continue to be in my mouth. Now, there is a real causal connection between. How we endure affliction now and how much we will be able to enjoy the glory of God later. Yes. If you can handle the pressure of affliction now, then you can walk in the power of the glory later. Amen. See, a lot of times we only get to one level in God because that's all we can handle. Wow. Let me tell you how God knows if you can handle more. If you're complaining at the level you're at, you nullify elevation to the next level. Yes, but if you can see God, and even in all the hell that you're going through, if you can see God and respond positively, wow. then God says you're ready to go to the next level. So Paul said, watch this. Paul says, we don't look at the things which are seen. What you see is the affliction. But we look at the things which are not seen. What you don't see is the glory. For those things that are seen, the afflictions, are temporary, but that which is not seen, glory to God, the glory is eternal. Right. So how, glory to God, can I make it through? I've got to change my focus. Right. Well, Pastor, how can I look at what I can't see? I'm glad you asked that question. The Hebrew word for see is the word chaza, C-H-A-Z-A-H, which means to prophesy and behold. So the way I see the glory of God is I prophesy to myself what God has said about me. Come on somebody. That prophecy then gives me something to behold. Or let me say it this way. You got to say what you heard so you can see what you say. Mm, glory to God. Come on Facebook. Prophesy to yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're in a, in a rough place right now, but prophesy to yourself. Say my life is going to get better. Things are going to change. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You got to speak life to yourself. Find you a mirror that's long enough, that's wide enough in my case, and begin to prophesy to yourself. Yeah, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the lender. Prophesy to yourself. If you want to see what you said, you got to say something. My God, my God. So what is it about this thing called glory? Why can't God, you ever ask yourself, why can't God simply give me his glory and save me the embarrassment of affliction? Mm -hmm. Don't this sound good? No, just give me the glory. That's it. If you raise children and all you ever give them is sweets to eat, mm -hmm. their teeth don't fall out. It's the truth. Yeah. Sometimes you, they got to eat some stuff they don't like. Yeah. Because it's good for them. Yeah. This is what I've discovered with God. <laughs> God gets, watch this. He gets the greatest glory from the deepest affliction. God gets the greatest glory from the deepest affliction. Let me show you this one. Whenever you build a tall structure, before you go up with it, you got to go down with it. You got to dig down deep because of how high you're going to go up. So because I suffer more, doesn't mean God loves me less. But what it means is because God dug deep, He's going to take me higher. So all that I'm going through now is only because how high he's going to take me. Yeah. So it looks like I'm going through hell, but guess what? I'm on my way to heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, somebody. You 
got to get this in your spirit, glory to God. So Paul says this, Paul says, this affliction is creating an eternal weight of glory, glory to God. What you're going through is temporary, but what it's producing is eternal. It is interesting that Paul uses the word weight, glory to God, to describe the glory, but the Hebrew word for weight is the word kabah. Kabod means to make heavy. It means to make weighty. It means to give you influence, glory to God. And so we understand, glory to God, that, that we may face an obstacle that seems immovable because of its sheer size and mass. Have you ever dealt with a trial that seemed like you're dealing with it every two or three months? It seemed like it won't go away. This coronavirus seemed like it won't go nowhere. I thought that once it got hot, it will go away. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But how do you deal with something that seems like it's immovable? Jesus. The answer can only be found in the word of God. So although I've been saying there will be glory after this, uh -huh. there is something that I can do while I face that seemingly immovable object called affliction. What I'm going to do to expedite the glory of God coming into my situation is, the Bible says in Psalms 23, 22 and 3 says, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. So when I praise God, he shows up in the midst of my affliction. Oh my God. Can you see why the enemy doesn't want you to praise God while you're going through what you're going through? Because if you praise God while you're going through what you're going through, God is going to show up in your situation. And if God shows up in your situation, God is not going to allow your situation to remain the same. Oh my God, I got 10 minutes. Glory to God. He's not going to allow your situation to remain. Can I be honest with you? Help me out, brothers. Now, y'all know this. They know this more than anybody up here. But all the devil is is a broke, out of work ex musician. That's Right in the midst of this. Come on, somebody. 
the thing that expedited the glory was our praise and worship of God. So there will be glory after this. But when I praise and worship God, I bring his glory into this. That's what my praise and worship reaches for and grabs the glory of God and brings it into this. So I don't have to wait till my after, but I can praise God right now because the Bible declares, hallelujah, he inhabits the praises of his people. I wish I had a church this morning. Come on, church, and make some noise. If your boy is preaching good, then I need you to understand. You've been going through hell, hallelujah, with high water on. That means your ankle is getting cold. But God sent me by this morning to let you know that you glory after this, and there is glory by your right in this. Glory to God, hallelujah. Can I teach just for a few more minutes? Hallelujah. There was a story, glory to God, in the Bible, in the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 3, glory to God. There are three Hebrew boys, and glory to God, the king has made this image, and whenever they see the image, they are, whenever they see the image and hear the music, oh, there you go again, come on, music, give me something right real quick, baby. Hallelujah. Yeah, give me something real quick. Yes, yeah, sir. Whenever they were to hear the music, come on. Whenever they were to hear that music, yes. Wherever you were in the land, you were to stop and you were to bow down to these totem poles. Whatever you were doing, you were to stop and you were to bow down. But can you imagine the sight? Everybody in the land bowed, but you got these three boys. They said, Thank you, sir. What you, what you need to understand is, they were taught as little children that thou shalt worship the other gods. You have to announce thou shalt not bow thyself down before them. Let me tell you something. You gotta know something before you face something. You gotta know the word before you have to use the word. Because when you have to use it and you don't know it, it's too late then. But guess what these three people were? They said, look, we, we can't bow. So the king was mad. And he said, I'm going to give you one more chance. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But guess what the three Hebrew boys said? They said, oh, king, we are not careful to answer you concerning this matter. In other words, do what you got to do. <laughs> but we're not going to buy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't care how bad this coronavirus gets. I'm still going to give God the glory. I'm still going to preach the word. I'm still going to teach the word. I'm still going to pay my tithes and offering. Do what you got to do, devil. of the fiery furnace. And the Bible says, hallelujah, because they went in praising and worshiping God, that when they got into the fiery furnace, that God got into it with them. Hallelujah. The king had to say, did we not cast in three? But in all I see four, 
ambush. Yeah. He'll lead you out. Did you, did you notice that the text said they didn't even smell like smoke? They didn't look like what they had been through.